and welcome to Storytime with Uncle Gravy. We're on to chapter two of The Russells by a local author who I know very well. And today we'll find out a little bit more about the Russells and their little world. Twinkle dot, twinkle dot, there in the night. Twinkle dot, twinkle dot, pretty and bright. Twinkle dot, twinkle dot, where do you go? Are you just hiding? Will I ever know? Ash couldn't sleep because the wet patch on the seed hadn't properly dried out yet and the flappy flies were all singing louder than ever. Singing a song usually helped the eyes to get heavy but today Ash just felt different for some reason. So the singing continued but softly so Bernie and Chris wouldn't be disturbed. Being inside a snail shell a lot of the time was very good for lots of reasons but they could also make the noises outside louder and bouncy which wasn't Ash's favourite thing. The ants were busy today too. There weren't many things that could just wander straight into their shelters, but ants were one of them. They were curious things to the Russells. They didn't talk at all, but always seemed to have lots and lots of other anty friends with them. They smelt a bit funny, but this didn't seem to bother them or their families either. Bernie had actually tried to talk to an ant once, had stepped in its way and stopped it, but it just bit and then carried on walking before another bunch of ants arrived soon after and ran around looking excited. Ash really hoped that one day Chris would share some information about ants. Ash and Bernie knew that Chris seemed to just know things. And generally, as soon as Chris knew things, they were always shared. But no lessons about ants had happened yet, so today, as Ash sang and hummed quietly, watching an ant walk in from one side of the shell, do a wiggly walk over the roof and then leave out the other side. Everything was pointing towards an interesting but probably uneventful day. Just down the road, Holly was sitting in her classroom next to Jake, her best friend. They were glued to the video that the teacher was playing, whispering excitedly and making plans. The theme, Helping the Environment, had been chosen for the class project for the summer holiday and all of the garden or sorry, all of the children with gardens had been asked to try and make changes to make their gardens friendly and more accessible for hedgehogs and wildlife to live and move about in. The children without garden spaces were asked to try and team up with a friend and work together on the project, taking photos or drawing plans of their improvements as they were done. Then they could spend time afterwards in the garden space together, watching for wildlife and seeing if their efforts had made a difference. Holly and Jake loved to write nature diaries and to make scrapbooks, so they had already decided that they would record the animals and creatures that they saw before they made the changes. Then they could sit outside together on the sunny days when the grown-ups were busy and make lists of everything they saw and heard once the changes had been made. They were now, though, thinking of an even better thing. A campout in their gardens, a midnight feast and a new notebook and torch each. At break time they decided that both of them would ask their parents that evening and make sure that the project and the camp out happened. After all it would keep them entertained and it was going to help all the animals in the garden and hopefully open up the garden to attract more hedgehogs too. What Holly and Jake couldn't know yet was that it was also going to open up a new world of adventures for them and the Russells. Bernie was a tapping on the outside of the shell that Ash was singing in. Ash, have you been napping yet? Ash's song was interrupted, but a reply came instantly. No sleep for me at all, my friend. There's just too much to ponder. Too many things to think about, and so my mind will wander. Bernie liked the way that Ash talked. Ash felt that even the trickiest of subjects could be made friendly when there was a rhythm or a bounce to the words and there was something on Ash's mind that needed sharing. Well, hmm, I've been napping. I don't know how long for, but I was dreaming my dream again, and it's confusing me. Can I share? Ash moved quickly to the edge of the shell, lifted it up and stepped forward, smiling. You can say anything. I am your friend. I'll try to help if you have a loose end. Bernie smiled back, took a deep breath which didn't take very long, and started to explain what had happened in the dream. 
You know, sometimes when the thing that Chris calls the moon is completely round and big and light. Well, I always have the dreams when it gets like that, and the same thing always happens in them. Ash was curious already. And so what happens? What is it you see? Do you see Chris in it? Do you see me? Bernie was trying to find the words to describe the dreams and felt a bit silly, but knew that Ash would always listen and didn't judge as quickly as Chris sometimes did. Um, well, you see, it's not so much about what happens in the dream. The thing that's confusing me is what I hear in the dream. Ash was smiling now. This story was getting better all the time. You hear things in dreams? That is such a cool trick. If I ever dream, they are silent and quick. Unlike Chris, Ash was equally good at listening and speaking, so Bernie was beginning to feel more comfortable getting to the truth about what was happening in these dreams. You know, we all talk to each other, mainly when we need to share something or just have something that needs to be done. Well, that makes sense. We know that talking and making noise is not always safe to do, right? Ash was nodding. Even that seemed to have a rhythm to it, so Bernie continued. Well, in the dream, I can hear another voice. I know that it isn't mine. It isn't Chris's either, because the voice sounds too warm and friendly. It, it isn't yours, but the words are bouncing and moving and fitting together like yours do. And the weirdest part, it sounds like it's talking to someone, but no one answers. It's like it's talking to itself. Ash was feeling properly excited by all this now. It felt like Bernie was telling a story. The ending hadn't been written yet, but it felt as though finding out was going to be definitely very exciting. So what does it say, Bernie? What does it say? Is it out working or is it at play? How do you know there is only one voice? There could be two, but they copy by choice. Bernie could sense that Ash's imagination was starting to wander, but knew that things would come back down to normal when the next part was shared. The, the voice is talking, but also calling out. He's only very faint, so it feels like it might be close and whispering, but also that it could be quite far away and shouting, but all at the same time, which doesn't make any sense. Bernie looked confused, but continued, and it, it keeps on saying the same thing. Ash's large eyes were lighting up now. What does it say, Bernie? What does it say? This is the best story I've heard today. <sighs> OK, said, sighed Bernie. I'll say it, but I can't tell you more than this because it's all I can remember. In every dream, it says this. Hello, can you hear me? I know that you're there. I'm friendly. You're safe. I won't hurt you, I swear. Ash heard Bernie say the words, and they sounded natural and nicely fitting, but that only added to the mystery. Ash had to ask, but knew really it was just thinking out loud. So why does this voice seem to talk like I do? I promise it isn't me, really, it's true. And when you were dreaming, is this this every time? A small and a new voice just repeating the line? Yes, said Bernie. And the thing is that although the dreams and the words are always the same, the way it sounds keeps changing. Sometimes it sounds very friendly and I wake up smiling. Sometimes the voice sounds scary and I wake up worried. I don't know why I'm dreaming it or what's happening, but I know that tomorrow is going to be a big, bright moon and I'm already a bit scared. Ash was thinking so many things all at once, but knew and felt that the most important thing was to make Bernie feel a little better and as quickly as possible. I'm really glad that you told me your dream. I don't have an answer to what it might mean, but you are my friend and I'll help all I can. How about we just come up with a plan? Tomorrow we'll find a big shell that fits two and we'll nap together, just me and just you. If you have a dream and wake up feeling scared, then I will be with you and we'll be prepared. Bernie really liked the way that Ash handled things. Sometimes Chris would criticise Ash for not planning ahead or thinking of all possible outcomes to all the possible choices, but Ash usually thought it was better to deal with what was right in front of you than needing some help or attention than to think about other things afterwards.
It hadn't been easy for Bernie to share what had been a very big worry for quite a long time now, and Ash's response was exactly what was needed. Thank you, Ash, smiled Bernie. That sounds like a very nice plan. I feel a bit better now. Let's look for a big shell later and remember where it is, so tomorrow can be a relaxing day before the moon gets really bright and I get tired again. Ash was smiling, but also rocking very gently and slowly from side to side. That's okay, Bernie. It might be good fun. A big shell for two. An adventure's begun. But now, I'm quite sleepy. Your story is great, but I've just done planning, so napping can't wait. Bernie and Ash shook furry hands, turned around and headed back to their shells. It had been a busy morning already, with one nap already missed, but both of them felt confident and happy that although they were going to try and nap again, this time they were both going to snuggle down and rest properly with smiles on their furry faces. Tomorrow, we'll start on chapter three and find out a little more about what might happen next. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this one, first part's on uh, YouTube as well. Do subscribe, it costs precisely zero. Um, and it'll just let me know that you're having a watch, which is lovely. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying it. Hello to Joseph, hello to Isaac, hello to Theo and anybody else who's watching, including big grown up Mark, who's actually a grown up, but likes stories. I respect that a great deal. See you soon.